All right, it's a gloomy day here in Pittsburgh for a lot of reasons. So I'm gonna try to uh, brighten your day with some talk about Python code blocks in org mode and how to use them more effectively. So we use Python a lot. Uh, here's a, an example of a prototype script that runs for a while. If I run this, uh, Emacs is not responsive while it's running for these five seconds and I have to wait uh, before it can put those results in. That's not convenient if you have a script that may take 10 minutes or an hour to run, and in research we have that. This block is another kind of uh, issue if I run this one. Then I get a split window. It tells me I have this exception. It tells me it's in line two, uh, but you see there's no lines up here, and only because this line is, uh, this block is short can I find it. So my students and I uh, thought it would be nice if we could improve these, these things a lot. And so I'm going to show you how we've been uh, working on that. So we did a couple of things. First, uh, I want the traceback to go in the results because sometimes I'm trying to teach students about tracebacks and I want a permanent copy that I don't have to copy and paste um, each time. But I also want uh, each file or line number to be hyperlinked so that I can click on it to, to get to it pretty easily. The students really want the cursor to jump to the last line in the code block so that it goes immediately to a line where there's an error that needs to be fixed. And they wanted line numbers to show them where everything else is. So we define a variable that uh, is going to, by default, put line numbers in there only after an exception is run. And when you are running it, it'd be nice to see the results in real time instead of waiting. So we have another variable that is default set to nil, so we don't see it, but we'll show you that there are links that allow you to access this, uh, this information uh, so you can see in real time how the um, Python block is running. Finally, we, we wrote an autopep8 function that will re uh, replace the Python code block with autopep8 corrected code, so it will fix all the spacing and comments and things like that, and a pylint function that will analyze your uh, block and tell you if there's any errors so I'll show you some of those. The code for this is currently in a development branch of Cymax. Uh, I probably won't merge it into master until sometime in December after the semester's over because it changes a lot of the way the students are used to working. All right, so to, to do this, we just have to require the Cymax org Babel Python library and then add it to the control C, control C hook so that it will run whenever we uh, use this in a code block. All right, so let's look at the difference uh, in behavior. First, uh, I'll make this be a two so I have a little more time. And if I run this now, I get first a link here that I can click on to kill it and a link here which I can open and it'll show me in real time how the code is going. And if I click on this, then it interrupts it and it jumps directly to the place where the uh, keyboard interrupt occurred, which is this line. And you see that we have the traceback in the buffer, and I can click on this, and it goes directly to the line where the error occurred. So if I'm down here, I click on this, and it jumps up there. OK, so let's look at, uh, at this example. Here we get a highlighted version in line 2. You can see the, the line numbers here. As soon as I type a key, those line uh, numbers go away and then I could fix this, uh, say, by commenting it out and run it again, and you see what happens. So that's pretty nice. Uh, if we have a different code block like this one, uh, we have here a differential equation function that takes an argument. Here I forgot to put the argument in. When I run this, then I get a error in line 11 that it's missing one required positional argument and the cursor is already here so I can go directly to, to fixing it. All those things are, are pretty nice. I can click on each one of these. You can even open the ODE pack and see exactly what line uh, caused the error uh, if, you, if you like to do that kind of thing. All right, just to give you an idea of how convenient it is uh, to be able to kill a process, this code block never ends. Uh, and the only way to end it is to click on this and it will automatically end it and you can get back to, to doing your work. Let me show you briefly about AutoPep8. Um, this is a tool for reformatting Python code and I wrapped it into an Emacs command so if you have 
uh, code like this uh, where somebody is, has sent it to you and they clearly don't like the spacebar or if their spacebar is broken, we just type auto pep8 and it automatically reformats and puts spaces where they belong and puts two spaces here and one space here and so forth. So that makes uh, for easy to format Python code uh, according to the auto pep8. Finally, we can look at, uh, at PyLint. So uh, this is another command line tool for looking at uh, Python uh, scripts. And this is also now wrapped into an Emacs command so you can run it on a Python source block. So let's take a look at, at that for this one. Uh, and this will statically analyze the code block and generate a PyLint report. And so here, for example, it says exactly one space required. If we click on this link, it takes me to the line where that's uh, uh, a case. Uh, and so then you can uh, jump here and add a space. And then here we are calling too many function args. So this function has only one argument. Here it has two. If you click on this, it takes you to the actual column. Uh, six where the error occurs. So we could get rid of these and if you run it again now then you see that uh, there is nothing to report. PyLint is clean uh, down here. So those are a couple of the new features of uh, Cymax Python support that we're using a lot and hopefully you'll find them helpful in your own work in the future. That's it for today.